Donut Bag is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Your data is your business. Protect it with ExpressVPN for three extra months free with a one-year package. Go to the link listed in my Twitter profile. All right. So before we talk about the Steelers, we have to talk about the the, the breaking news of, of today. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. First of all, before before we talk about the trades, it used to be that like – the baseball trade deadline was exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the hockey trade deadline was exciting. I think I think NBA trade deadline was was kind of exciting. It but can the, be, as a but, but the NFL trade deadline used to be the most boring thing ever. Nobody ever made a trade, and right. now there are more trades on, on today than than ever. Ever, and it's I, it's crazy and it's exciting. I love stuff like that. I believe Adam Schefter said ten trades, and that's a record. Ten trades, man. ten trades. And it was, yes. and they were shooting left and right. What between one and two o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. It's and yeah, they just kept coming, mm-hmm. and and the the crazy thing is, even the Steelers were trading. There was all kinds of talk about: Are they going to trade tra- Chase Claypool? Right, and, right. And and I, I think everybody said the same thing. I think everybody said, mm-hmm. "Yeah, if you get a second round pick, right." Then maybe it's worth it, yeah. <laughs> and they did with yeah, the Bears, happened. yeah. And it's just... oh my goodness! And then they get a cornerback, uh, mm-hmm. William Jackson the third from right. from Washington, and that's I think that's very interesting. Um, it is. Um, but what do you think it says about the team? They trade one guy and then they bring another guy in. Is yeah. this isn't like it's not like they're giving up on the season, is it? No, it really doesn't. I think uh, there were a lot of waves and undertones with um, Chase Claypool that, from what I've heard other media types say, that um, his, he may have been a distraction in the locker room. And, you know, I didn't see him. I mean, the times that I was in there, I'd never seen him really say anything, you know. And But those that, that were around more than me <laughs> could probably have a right to say that they feel that way, you know. And and also, just the fact that this is, in my opinion, you know, they have enough at receiver where they could make a move like that. I didn't believe it was going to happen. Or maybe I'm just very old school. And every time I hear someone jump at a trade, especially involving Pittsburgh, <laughs> I just don't believe it's going to happen. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so maybe it, it was that case. But then when I saw it, I had to admit for about five seconds, I was a little bit surprised that it actually did take place. But even more surprised, like you said, that they get a second round pick. And it just goes to show how desperate Chicago was in getting him. And I heard Green Bay also was willing to give up a second round pick for him too. So isn't okay. that something? That I think you just I think you you just blew the whole cover off the thing. <laughs> uh, that was my question is why would Chicago want Chase Claypool? Yeah. And maybe they wanted him because Green Bay wanted him. That that's that that, that was a talk of mm-hmm. like everybody was saying it's like obviously the Packers need to get another wide receiver mm-hmm. and it made a lot of sense for them to trade for, for chase Claypool. But then mm-hmm. eventually they, they ended up doing nothing. Right. But yeah. I, I, it's, it's a kind of a kind of a, actually it's a really curious move by the, by the bears because they traded Roquan Smith. They traded, I think they're, um, you heard Roquan Smith to the Ravens. Mm-hmm. They traded, their defensive end to uh, last week to the Eagles. Right. They traded him. Yeah. And then they, they, they make a trade for, for, for a wide receiver. It's, <laughs> it's weird. It's weird, yeah. but Hey, whatever. It, it, it's, it's a great deal for the Steelers because if the, if the bears stink and they probably will, yeah. that's a high second round pick. And that's Absolutely. awesome. Yeah. And then you have, yeah, you have a high second round pick, two second round picks overall. And it makes people even forget. I mean, that they that they gave up that fifth round pick. So I mean, it you know, and we know fifth round picks aren't <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They aren't as huge. Yeah, you know? yeah. They play. They have their role. They have their place, but they they're not as huge, and it's not really considered a, a, a tremendous loss. But yeah, having two second round picks in today's game, 
And that, that's a bonus. And especially in Pittsburgh's case, because, you know, folks, you know, it's always a concern in the offseason. And truthfully, if they needed to use that for something, they could. But, you know, I don't think they're going to. I think maybe they're going to dip into the draft and do it like they are known to do it so they can um, get better, you know. But um, as far as getting William William uh, Jackson, I really believe that they're finally admitting the fact that the secondary right now just is, I hate to say it, just, just horrible, man. I mean, watching them on Sunday and watching – Watching Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown just continuously oh. burn, oh. and oh, in particular, was, I hate to say sad. this, Akello Witherspoon, burn him and start calling him Interstate Twenty Five after a while. You know? Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was clear they were targeting him and mm-hmm. it was working, and yeah, that was that mm-hmm. was that was sad. Um, yeah, is. I I don't know if I have the right person, but um, I was William Jackson the same guy that the Steelers wanted back yeah. like six years ago, but the the Bengals swooped in yeah. right be, right in front of them and yeah. picked him up, and then the Steelers had to settle for uh, R. D. Burns. Yep, You're is that the guy? Oh. Right. That is him. Two thousand sixteen. Oh. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Oh. And you know, and Pittsburgh is that type that. If they ever have a chance to get somebody they couldn't get previously prior, then they'll do it. Just like yeah. Mika Fitzpatrick, they scouted him and he, and ended up with uh, Terrell Edmonds because Miami told them so. I mean, yeah, so that that that's how they roll. So I'm yeah. hoping that you know his veteran experience can really make a difference to a secondary that needs it. It needs it bad because you know I, it's not my place to ever question anybody's effort, which I won't do. But it's just something's missing, man. You know, something's missing with this team. And it just seems like, you know, the air has been let out a few times. I mean, against Buffalo the first time and now now against um, against Philly. I mean, no, I mean, I know I didn't never believe that Pittsburgh really had a chance to beat Philadelphia. But if you're going to lose, you know, <laughs> you, you lose. Put up a fight. Out. Yeah. Make it yeah. close. Something like that. And they, yeah. yeah, they, they, they didn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, they are totally at a crossroads. Mm-hmm. We are um, just about at the halfway point of the season. They have a buy and now we'll see where they go from here. Are they going right. to just give up? Are they going to put up a fight? Are they going to actually win some games? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's that's a big question. It's that's going to be really interesting to see how this second half of the season develops. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I can't see them going down, going out like a lot of folks expect them to, or a lot of folks expect teams to do in this place. I mean, the last time they were two and six was in two thousand six, which was uh, Bill Cowher's final season, and we thought that team was bad, but then they turned around, and finished six and two. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. I mean, obviously, a lot more talent, a lot more seasoned veterans with that team. But, you know, we've seen it when a team seems like, and again, I'm not saying this to be be mean or anything like that, worried. When it seems like the heart may not be there, and then all of a sudden you get a spark. I mean, we all go through that in our lives, you know, where maybe we're so tired that we know we're not putting forth our best effort or whatever's going on. Man, I might have something on our minds. Losing is frustrating. It is. And I know the most overrated line in sports, in my opinion, is I hate losing. Of course, who likes it? But when you're going through that, it can be, especially when there were several, so many games they should have won, like the Patriots game they should have won, the Jets game they should have won, and then most recently the, the uh, Dolphins game they should have won. I just go back and I just wish the goodness Kenny Pickett would have ran instead of throwing that ball, but he's a kid. He's learning, but still, I just wish we could get the DeLorean, just go back in time, We're like just run. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, if if we're talking about this team, instead of being two and six, they're four and four and something like that. We're this is a completely different conversation. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's yeah that that Patriots game was that should have been a win. Even the Browns game, even the Browns game could have yeah. been a win. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So. uh I, I, I just, I, I think this this buy came at the perfect time, mm-hmm. and I think, 
no matter what, I think they're going to regroup and do. And and also, oh, by the way, they get TJ Watt back. Who's, who's going to be? Yeah, who's going to be? I think he's just, well, I think he's going to change the defense completely. And yeah. I think it's absolutely crazy that one guy, and yes, he is one of the best players in the league, but one guy basically is going to make everything better on that defense. Yes, I agree. And think of like, in history, all the players, I mean, all the teams that were impacted by one good defensive player. I mean, look at when um, Dick Buckus played and look at when Ray Nitsky played, but, it, you know, thing, and they, they had a few on that team. Look at the Steelers with Joe Green, Jack, and then when he moved on, it was Jack Lambert, you know, but then they played together. And then look at Ray Lewis with the Ram, uh, with the Rams, with the Ravens. Oh, don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Urlacher with the Bears. That one well, player even, that could just make a difference. Even now, um, mm-hmm. take away on the on the Cowboys. Um, what's this kid? The, the, the kid from Penn State. Now I'm drawing a blank. Uh, anyway, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's really good. Um, <laughs> You know, you take away, you know, you know, people are criticizing the Steelers. It's like, oh, this is such a highly paid defense and it's nothing. I was like, yeah, well, you take away the best player from any team and they're, right. they're not going to do as well. So um, sure. I, I, oh. I think I think TJ Watt is just going to he's going to help. He's going to help. Uh, I'm really excited to see how Alex Highsmith is going to because yeah. I think he's been having a good year. Mm-hmm. And now that there's going to be all the all the attention on TJ Watt. He, I think, I think Alex Highsmith is going to have a really big second half. Yeah, I believe that, and I like to see Malik Reed also do the same, and then see what the line does. Like you know, Cam has always been one to get a, get his, I guess you could say, ten sacks. He had ten last year, um, and, and get those sacks coming coming off the line as well as um, as well as all the all the other linemen. I mean, you have the Marvin Leal and. You have oh my goodness why am I forgetting y'all the defensive lineman on the team? <laughs> yeah, Larry Ogunjobi. That's yeah. who I'm really. I, yeah. I I hope he's okay. Yeah, I hope he's okay. Yeah, I because I, I think if 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 Larry Ogunjobi is okay and playing well, mm-hmm. then you have that situation that you had in right. in in week one in Cincinnati where that defense was just wreaking havoc. Yeah, and that was incredible. I, I think I think that could be really special, and, and then and then it doesn't really matter how bad the cornerbacks are because the quarterback is going to be running for his life, right? And and, yeah. and he doesn't have to worry about throwing the ball because he's, he's just sure. going to be he, he can't even throw it. So You're right. we'll see. Um, oh yeah, so that's Micah Parsons you were talking. Micah about. Micah Parsons, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. He he's incredible. He really is. I mean, he and is. then look at the Cowboys, unbelievable. Who would have thought that? He would have thought it, and it's it's really it's mostly because of Micah Parsons. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, like, they were even winning with Cooper Rush for goodness sake. For sure, and they Micah were. Parsons. And it just what is that a reminder of? You know, just the fact that it really takes a team. I mean, you have all your parts. You know, one body, many parts, as the Bible says. But everybody knows their parts. Everybody knows their role. And when you do that, then you have these teams that are contending. You know. That they just fit right in. Wow! And Micah Parsons came in and did what he had to do. I mean, not for, I mean, did I did I mean Cooper Rush? I'm sorry, Cooper Rush came in and did what he had to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah, he's he 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 fit perfectly and he knew what to do. Mm-hmm. And it, it was a well run team that was that was a well well run unit that was working well, which is the exact opposite of what the Steelers' offense is. Yeah, it is yeah. a dysfunctional mess. It is. It is. And yeah. everybody wants to say it's it's because of Matt Canada. Mm-hmm. It can't be just because of that. Yeah, I don't I, mean, I don't know what's going on. But when you have uh, Kenny Pickett saying stuff like, "Well, we we don't study enough and 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 we're not prepared enough or something like that," it's like mm-hmm. that's a little. That's, for itself. that's a little scary. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like I, I, if they're saying it in public, something's really wrong. Some, yeah. th- there must be something really wrong with that. And that's what losing can do. Frustration, frustration can, can just bring it. Just brings it all out. You're trying to be discreet, trying to be subtle, but you know it's easy to just really say that. And it's no coincidence that every person that has a microphone in their face on offense has said something about the offensive play, the game plan. 
that has to get the attention of the front office. It has to. And I mean, obviously it does. I mean, they're they're only sharing, <laughs> you know, to everybody. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors, but something's wrong. I mean, for him not to, the, for the field to not get stretched on a regular basis, and this is coming off a future Hall of Fame quarterback, Emile Roethlisberger, that was known for doing it, you know, and even though the last two years, but still, I, and, I, and my wife even said this too, if Ben was still quarterback in this year, they would be four and four. I believe. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, he would have, he would have pulled some of those games out, but it, mm-hmm. it, 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 whether this is true or not, it sure seems like last year, Ben just said, forget this Matt Canada stuff. I'm just going <laughs> to run my own play. I think and, he kind of did admit it though. <laughs> yeah. I think he kind of did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I won't say he, yeah, it sounded like it when it, on, uh, I saw a quote on Twitter, uh, I guess it whether it was on his podcast or not. It sounded like he was basically saying, Hey, I had my moments where I just, did what I felt like I needed to do. So like I say, it, it sounded like it, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to put words in his mouth though. <laughs> yeah. But mm-hmm. you know, everybody is saying, well, fire Matt Canada fire. I mean, even, even today, the Colts fired their offensive, offensive coordinator, coordinator and that guy even does, didn't even do anything. I guess Frank, right. Wow. The, the, the coach was calling the place, but still, that's that's just not how the Steelers do things. Mm-hmm. They're they're not going to they're not they're not going to announce it. If they do anything, they'll make changes internally and they'll yeah. they'll they'll make they'll, they're not gonna they're not gonna say yeah he got it here. Yeah. That's, that's just yeah. not how they run. So sorry everybody that thinks that you know mm-hmm. sorry sorry the the entire you know Steelers mob that once <laughs> once it once it's done <laughs> and, and it's not waiting. happening. <laughs> And waiting. <laughs> I made a joke on uh, Facebook and I actually put it on Twitter too. I, don't I know saw, that. saw that. I saw yeah. that. By Lionel Richie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Mm-hmm. So I, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, but something needs to be changed. I mean, what what is the definition of insanity? You know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And it's not working. If, if the goal for the Pittsburgh Steelers is to always live up to their legacy of competing for a championship right now, the season was over, they'd probably get the number, what, fourth pick in the draft. <laughs> you know? Prob- yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking maybe, it, it, I mean, not maybe, factually, they just, they need something has to change when they get ready to, to host New Orleans in a couple of weeks. They need this because it's just not good. It's not good at all. And, you know, I don't like seeing them like that. I I know you don't like seeing them like that. And it's just not, we're not used to that, man. We're not used to this, you know? Um. Yeah. A- a- another big problem with that offense is Najee Harris. Yeah. Something is wrong with the, with the guy. He mm-hmm. is just not, he's just not himself. I, I yeah. don't know if he's in his head. I don't know if it's an injury. He's just, he's just, he, he, I just hope he takes a break and just, just, just figures some things out. Cause he yeah. is just not what he's supposed to be. It's, no, he's it's not. sad. It's not. Um, and I had, I was in training camp from what it, it looked like. Either he must have just had his foot stepped on as it was dismissed to be. And then I heard some other things too, but he don't. He does not look like the same guy that rushed for 1,200 yards last year. And one play in particular was on Sunday when um, Pickett threw him the ball on a screen. It was like an easy first down. The next thing you know, he's <laughs> dancing. Like, yeah. <laughs> There was nobody in front of him between him and the first down, yeah. but he started dancing for yeah. some reason yeah, because because he's right. so used to he's so used to mm-hmm. you know being being attacked you know immediately. So yeah, so it is something wrong, and you know, and of course you have the lot some of the fans trying to say, well, he should have been traded. I'm like, yeah, okay. Next next question <laughs> and number oh. two, and J- and with respect to undrafted free agent Jalen Warren, he's doing what he's supposed to do, but he's not the starter. It's, it's Harris, but I think maybe Harris does need to sit and maybe, and I think he is injured. So I think he just needs to heal. I think he needs yeah. to heal up. They need to just, like you said, give him a break, just chill out and just go from there. But, but, you know, forcing him out there, especially with the line still not being a hundred percent. I mean, this honestly, and this is just my opinion. This honestly is probably one of the worst offensive lines I've seen in my lifetime of watching the Steelers. Hi, Darren. Just hey guys, lifetime. how are you? Hey, Sorry Darren, about how are you, sir? 
<laughs> Good, Roy. How are you, Ray? Hey, there no is, complaints, is, is, man. No complaints at all, man. <laughs> hey, he was there, like, you can get out there and play some ball, man. Put you, put, <laughs> put you, put you on the line, man. <laughs> well, they didn't get alignment today, did they? Which is what they no, really needed. No, they didn't, you know. And, you know, we were just talking about – um well, I just spoke about the offensive line and how, honestly, just in my opinion, and I've lived on this earth for 50 years, and I've been watching the Steelers since 79. I was fortunate to see that <laughs> that the fourth Super Bowl as a seven-year-old. I've just not seen, a, I mean, a worse offensive line than this one right now. And 03, they had their moments. They had a bad offensive line in 03, too. But it was something about this. It seemed like there's no, you no know, synergy. There's no fundamentals. I mean, how many? What, what's the type of penalties they've been getting? That formation penalty or whatever it's called. Well, that several is, times. Several times. Is, um, it is an absolute. It's 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 sad and pathetic yeah. how many um formation penalties they get and yeah. illegal formation and stuff like that. It's yeah. unacceptable. And and we're we're halfway into the season and they're still getting them. That's well, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's what messed them up against Miami, too. I mean, the, the first drive that Pickett had them in the red zone, I'm convinced they're about to score. Then you had a one-formation penalty. Actually, it was on the receiver, number 13. Yeah. And then and then next to you know, <laughs> Dan Moore, <laughs> who gets his his game week-by-week week penalty for, for that same thing. And next thing you know, they're like third and 20. So it's just stuff like that that's hurting them, too. You know. Yeah, you know, it, it just seems like to me, are we recording now, Joe? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. It uh, it does seem to me to like, you know, one of the things I saw at the end of that game was the, the intensity to Claypool and some of the guys were showing like they were just sick of everything. Yeah, that's the kind of playing I saw. They were sick of they were just they were fed up, you know, and that's why you're thinking, well, your guys are getting crushed by the Eagles right now. And they actually started playing with some of the intensity that you wish they would have played up from the very beginning. And, you know, I just think, you know, you don't want to say the sky is falling at this point, guys, but mm-hmm. it's kind of starting to cave in. I think the locker room is kind of lost. Um, there's not much continuity. There's not much, you know, flow. Joe, to your point, I mean, how many of these illegal formations? And this is stuff you get through camp and you expect to see week one, two, and three. By then you've ironed it out and now we're kind of sailing through. Right. And we're we're still stumbling over ourselves. They're still just making plays. They're not opening the right holes for Najee. And to their defense, Najee's not hitting the right holes. So, I mean, it's right. just – it's bad communication everywhere. And to me, it's just – that's why I say it's kind of chaotic and chaos. Um, you know, obviously, I think the right thing to do in the offseason is to bring in an offensive lineman, to your point, Ray. Uh, they could have done that today. Instead, they're bringing in William Jackson. Um, <laughs> yeah, but who's who's – Who's no, no, there's almost no team that says, wow, we have too many good offensive linemen. We got to get rid of one of these guys. Nobody's doing that. That's like a, that's like a, either a free agency thing or a, or a, uh, or a draft thing. But the, I don't, you know, I don't think. Well, and the young guy, the bears draft, his name's escaping me, but he ended up, he's starting as a guard. He's actually not playing very bad. And he was a seventh round pick. Who the Steelers pick? They pick a quarterback. A quarterback who didn't even make the team, <laughs> right? The team. Uh, you know, and you can sit here. Well, come on, guys, we're really kicking around a seventh round pick, but I, I don't know. Um, I just don't, I, I don't know. Uh, and Chase, Chase Claypool, um, <laughs> I'm coming in late to the call, so I'm not sure exactly what you covered. I apologize for that there, fandom, fandom, and Joey Bag of Donuts land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think about the, the, the Claypool trade? You know, he's he's a talent. Uh, he just I just always have felt he didn't play up to his size and capability. Um, you know, he, he's got everything you want. I mean, there's four things you want from a receiver, right? A guy that can run a route. He can do that. Check that box. He's got the size. Check that box. He's got the speed. He's got the physicality. He just doesn't hasn't seen to ever bring that together. And other than the four touchdown game against the Eagles last year, which was fantastic. Um, you thought, here it is. This is what we've been waiting for. And it just has never come to fruition. Um, but he is a guy, I will say, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if down the road he develops into something and becomes a good receiver. Fields needs him right now in the worst yeah. way yeah, out yeah. there in Chicago, and that might be the right marriage. I kind of think about it like Plex. Uh, you know, seeing Plex go is – Plex had a lot of drama too. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, Plex ended up being a key player for the Giants for a while, uh, and Claypool might be that there, there too. It, it's just hard to see the point in it right now. 
Why send him away now? Why now? Um, so now you're limiting Kenny again uh, with some of his tools. Um, and Kenny, Kenny didn't have a great, uh, great game. Obviously, the last two games, uh, you know, his passer rating was 5.9 over 10 over passes of 10 yards in the air or longer on Sunday. Uh, horrible passer rating, you know, so that's not even developing the way we want to see it. So now you take away Claypool uh, and the guy they brought in, uh, you know, he's a guy Tomlin wanted him. I don't know if you guys remember much about this right. guy. Yeah, we were uh, just talking about that. That was the guy they wanted that 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 um the brand Bengals swooped in and got, and, got and, and they and they ended up with Artie Burns. Yeah, we got Artie Burns, and now this guy, you know, what's what's good about him is he's great in man to man coverage. He's not great in press coverage. He doesn't have the body for it. He also gets a lot of penalties because he he gets put in press coverage and he's a grabber. Oh. So you know, in man coverage, he really could be great, a great depth ad. Um, so we'll have to see, but. He played on a lot of bad Bengals defenses, a bad. Uh, so I have optimism for him if he's used to what he what he's capable of doing. That's man coverage, which he's very good at. Yeah, I have a um, Bengals fan, friend, friend who is a Bengals fan. And as soon as the trade was made, he was like, uh oh, uh oh, I'm telling you now, this is not a good deal. I told him, I said, hey, the Steelers saw something in them, so we we gonna hope for the best. You know, you know? <laughs> they, they they saw something and and they they saw what they already had, and oh, they saw gosh, Akella right. Witherspoon just getting burnt like toast. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, let's 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 just let's bring some competition here. Maybe maybe just see you know in practice who works out better between Witherspoon and William Jackson. I don't know. Right. But, you know. <laughs> Nothing will get you replaced on the depth chart like giving up three touchdowns to a guy on a Sunday afternoon. I mean, so, yeah. And two um, of them in the same corner. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. Um, um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see. And and the, the funny thing is, if the Steelers go on like some kind of win streak, people are going to be mad. People are actually going to be rooting for them to lose. It's like, what are you doing? You're ruining our don't, draft don't know what position. Was, <laughs> and you know, oh, that's nobody... the frustrating part about it, Joe. I mean, the AFC North is kind of wide open. It is. I mean, after last night, there's nobody running away. This Baltimore, mm -hmm. as of tonight, is probably the best team. But, you know, they could drop three in a row easily. So sure. <laughs> it's like if there's a time where we could be mediocre and probably still grab the division, it would be now. But yeah. we're not even mediocre. But it's um, just, yeah. You're yeah. right. You're right, uh, Darren. And the thing about it is it, it starts with wins. They got it. You got to win, especially now that it's the second half of the season. It's like in November, which number one, I can't believe it is November. <laughs> you know, yeah. but you know, but it's like now it's about as crunch time as you can get. You don't want to lose anymore because what if you lose like nine, three more games? That's pretty much it. That's pretty much a wrap. Eight, eight, eight is risky enough, but you don't want to lose nine games, even if you got a seventeenth game. You know, so it's yeah. it's, it's really about as put up or shut up right now for I, Pittsburgh as ever. <laughs> I just don't see a like six game winning streak coming from this team. <laughs> I don't be a miracle. <laughs> I don't see. I could see the only way that would happen is if a, the defense starts scoring some touchdowns because they, they ain't coming from the offense. Um, but still, if, if the, if the, if the defense with TJ Watt becomes so good that they limit teams to like 10 points a game or something like that. And then, you know, we win games like 12 to 10 or something like that. But that's, that's, hey, we'll take it. Okay <laughs> I don't yeah. see hope for this, for this offense. And it's yeah. just, I, I mean, yes, Kenny Pickett, hopefully we'll get better. And, and Najee, hopefully we'll get better, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah. this. It's, you know, you know, Joe, you said it in the last couple of podcasts, we're spoiled as Steelers fans. I think there's probably still a good amount of us Yenzers out there thinking, hey, after this Biden week and that, we're going to get out there. We're going to win eight of the next nine. We can do it. Right. And, you know, over the last couple of years, we found a way to do that. It's just this team, not this year. Sunday's proof of it. You know, I mean, that that Eagles team was just superior to us in every way on that field. Um, in the past, we would have found a way to keep that close, maybe possibly pull an upside or even win the game outright. This team just doesn't have it. You know, if you watch Sunday Ticket, um, not Sunday Ticket, uh, NFL Red Zone, you're looking like the Lions. You're looking like you know, the Texans, they just don't, just don't have it right now. Yeah. They just don't have it. 
And I, I think you're right, Joe. I think the best thing to really hope for now is watch Pickett develop, see if you can get some charisma and some communication going with Deontay Johnson, with um, Pickens, get Najee a little bit better, and then maybe, yeah, finish out the season respectable. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just don't think, you know, there's no playoffs within reach. I, I don't see it. One thing for sure. And I, and I can put I can even put a Joe Namath guarantee in it. <laughs> There's no way this play that they're losing that game on December 24th. I just don't believe it. I guess the Raiders. Yeah. And honoring the 50th anniversary of the immaculate reception and everything that's happening with that. And wearing the throwback uniforms, which really isn't much for Pittsburgh because they haven't changed the uniform, but they tend to rise up in games like that. You know, they, retire from Franco Harris's number two. They do. I remember what was it? I think it was like it was like the three thousandth game or something like that. They played the Rams. It was when Mark Bulger was their quarterback. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they came in and cleaned our clock because I took my dad to that game. I mean, they had like everybody from the Steelers past possible at that game uh that was one of the few games i remember uh but for the most part to your point ray i think you're right they they generally uh come out in games like that and mm-hmm. maybe that's what they need is uh jack lambert or somebody in there you know firing them up because um it looked to me like they were firing themselves up sunday mm-hmm. like getting into it a little bit and it was kind of like you you like seeing that but it was a little bit too late to yeah a little too late a little bit um, too late and, you know, who knows? Um, who do they have after the bye week, Joe? I'm embarrassed. I don't see that. Okay, so so the next game is is um, home to the Saints, then home to the Bengals, then at the Colts, then at the Falcons, then home to the Ravens, and then at the Panthers, and then, and then the Raiders game on the 24th. Yeah. That Saints defense just shut out uh, this week and uh, they shut out Arizona, I believe. And I mean, uh, and Oh crazy. yeah. They shut that, them out. Like, I wow. Mean, they, they looked. Oh they yeah. Looked solid. That defense well, is good. It, although it, it is roller coaster. You catch one around week, you can beat them. But well, Andy jokes Dalton, on you saints defense. We suck on our own. So we don't yeah. need you to stop us. Yes. Cause we can stop ourselves. <laughs> so there. That's right. Self-infliction. <laughs> But oh, yeah, Andy man. Dalton and the Saints. Um, I yeah, was not we're, that, we can't lose an Andy Dalton for goodness. <laughs> <laughs> At least they know him well. <laughs> I think that Colts game could be winnable in the Panthers game. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and honestly, right now, the way the Bengals looked last night, uh, call me crazy, but the Bengals game might be winnable, uh, especially if Watts back. Yeah. Wouldn't that be funny? Like Watt comes back. He left, you know, destroying the Bengals single-handedly. He comes back and destroys them again. Mm-hmm. Joe Burrow is like, what? Hey, you again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> we hey. took care of you. Hey, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, right. uh, well, the Bengals, I mean, we were talking about how bad the Steelers are because they're, they're losing their best player. And what happens if other teams lose their best player? Look at the Bengals without Jamar Chase. My goodness. They yeah, were, they were really a, shame. Yeah. A, a disaster. Like, there's a lot of talent on that team, and they looked horrible. Yeah. That's yeah. another thing that Zach Taylor, that 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 coach of the Bengals, he sucks. He's 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 going to ride the, the coattails of being in the Super Bowl, but that's really not a good coach. But anyway. <laughs> Unless they totally tank this year, he'll he'll have next year to turn it around. Yeah. Um, but I think if they if they go like this next year, I, he might not even make it through midseason if they're four and four next year. Mm, mm, mm. Because yeah, I mean, um, it look you hate to admit it, but Joe Burrow's. In my my mind, oh, is probably he's amazing. A, he's amazing, and he's yeah, he's a great quarterback. He's mm-hmm. a franchise. They could go win a Super Bowl or two with that kid, uh, and they got to build around it right, or or they're gonna blow with that shot. So, well, sure. I just hope one thing I heard. Um, I think this is from Jerry Dulac. He said something about uh, Matt Canada when he makes the game plan. He just does it by himself. There's no, he's not working with any coaches. He's not getting any input from him. He just does it all himself. Wow. Like, like, and, and, and just, just hearing, I think he said today, like, I was like, oh, I don't, I think I'm doing a great job or something like that. Like the arrogance on this dude is ridiculous. Great I job. hope, I don't know. I don't know if somebody needs to smack him or what, but nope. was that you, Joe, that shared, shared that still shot of him like this up in the booth? No, no, uh, it was but... priceless. He looked, yeah, he just looked. You can't tell me that, guys. I think there was a third and 10 or third and nine, and they did a little bubble pass over to Deontay Johnson. And it's just like, c- come on. I mean, 
none of the three of us are not going to sit here and pretend that we can outcoach an NFL. I get that. But I think the average fan sitting at home or sitting in Heinz Field or wherever you may have been Sunday would know that you've got to get to the middle of the field. It's like they avoid the middle of the field. Yeah. Like like the 46 or the uh, 86 Bears are out there waiting for them. Right. Like, yeah. what is uh, – is there something there? There can't be something there that's preventing you from doing it. I mean, get the ball downfield. Pickett's obviously capable of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just – yeah, that, that kind of stuff is just – yeah. Yeah, yeah, that not enough vertical, not enough I, vertical motion at all. I, I think I think this the second half. I'm I'm actually excited now. Just not not because I don't think they're gonna win, but I just just want to see what's gonna happen. Like, are we really like it? Can't this offense can't get any worse? Or can, right? And I don't know. Uh, w- one thing that's kind of scary I, is I don't know I, either. I hope that Matt Canada doesn't ruin Kenny Pickett. Right. You know, like, 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 like Najee got, he seems to have, he, he seems to develop into some bad habits because of how bad last year was. I hope Kenny Pickett isn't de- developing into some bad habits because of how bad this year is. I don't mm-hmm. know. I hope not either. And I, you know, he's a kid, he's a rookie, but the way he played last year for Pitt, just really just, I mean, everything about him. I mean, I cover Pitt too, and I've watched Kenny play his entire career and it just blew me away and i was very impressed i'm sure everybody else was i'm sure you both were too yeah Yeah. it's definitely there he's you know you talk yeah no it's a good point ray you know you talk about jerb burrows i think you see the same things in 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 pickett um and obviously yeah he's a pittsburgh kid you know or he's a pit kid and and, you know (laughs) there's that connection but if you even took that away if you brought him in from tcu uh, it's all still there. The, it's all there. The package is there. But um, mm-hmm. if you're going to get, you got a second round pick today, right off of Chariton Claypool, more than ever going forward, they got to make the best of what they have over the next two to three years. They have a yeah. small window here to mm-hmm. get this rebuilt and redone. Now, I believe Khan came in, Ray, in May. So he hasn't really had a chance to tackle a draft by himself. Right, right. So this will so, be his first one, guy. So that would be interesting too, Joe. Second half of the year, what's what's he thinking? What's the off season look like? Um, so there's got to be some hope on the horizon. That's what it is, sadly. I'm almost certain Kevin Colbert would not have traded Chase Claypool today, or and and got in Jackson. I have yeah. a feeling that Omar Khan does things differently, mm-hmm. and he's not afraid to make moves. And if that's the case, cool. I'm excited to see what he's going to do next year in free agency and next year in the draft. Um, <laughs> just, just some, you know, a, a, a different approach. Kevin Colbert was great, but still a yeah. different approach, a new, a new exciting approach. I, I like that. So, yeah. And because I think that's what it needs. If, if Tomlin is to persevere, if Tomlin's to persevere and, and maybe prove some of his naysayers wrong, I think this is the time. I mean, okay, you, you, everybody has their lows. We have lows in life. We have lows in sports. Uh, he's at a low right now. He's frustrated. You can tell he is. Yeah. Um, maybe this is it, this is his time to turn it around. Because if he can turn this around from whatever they're going to finish uh, and get them back into, like, Super Bowl contention, you know, in the next, let's say, two to four years, mm-hmm. then, then you got to kind of shut up and say, yeah, Tomlin, Tom was a darn then good he's coach. He's basically a king at that point. If yeah. He could, if he could – if he could get them get them back um <laughs> and and likewise if he can't like 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 he, he there is we're in, there we're in year two of a rebuild and i believe that rebuild if i'm guessing that rebuild will conclude next year next year will be the last year of the rebuild it's like okay we're gonna get our final pieces of the puzzle we're gonna get an offensive line and maybe some cornerbacks and maybe some defensive line. I don't know what, but still, I think next year is the last year of the rebuild. But after that, it's like okay, now it's time to put up or shut up. If this team continues to stink, then then unfortunately, I think Tomlin, you know, he, he's 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 he he'll 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 used up all of his goodwill. You know, I was thinking something um, like you were saying, uh, Joe, about how differently Omar Khan does things. So, this, so that, does that mean that maybe in a couple of days he might be, he might do something a little different too? 
with with what Matt Canada or what? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they are kind of getting into this unprecedented area here. I mean, you know, the move with we've made a couple of years ago, uh, moving up to get Devin Bush. Um, those are things you never used to see the Steelers do. Right. So I agree. I agree. Right now, you know, now with Con, I mean, it could be. You're right. Um, he, he can make moves w- that we never have seen before that we're just not used to, but that's what you need. I, mean, I keep thinking back to the Kansas City Chiefs a year before Mahomes uh, took them to the Super Bowl. That offensive line was putrid, and it's the big reason they didn't go. They totally revamped that entire offensive line. They revamped everything about it. So I'm with you, Joe. You, you get some free agency, you draft, whatever it needs to do, mm-hmm. and you need the guy that's willing to, A, pull the trigger, but pull the trigger in a smart way. And that's where our, our faith has got to lie right now is that Con will do both of those things. Yeah. We'll see. Now I'm excited. I was really depressed about this, <laughs> about, about the, the, this team. And now I'm, because all we've heard and, and, you know, we talked about the spoiled fan base. My goodness. What if you're a fan of Jacksonville or something like that? Like we couldn't like, like we haven't even had a losing season in, in forever. Right. What, what, what do you think they are like? What do you think fans of the Browns are like that, that are stuff? You know, the bills were bad for 20 years. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's, it's come on people. This is, yeah. this happens. It does happen. And it's, it, you know, it's a perspective to keep. It's not easy because that's your thing, you know, as fans, it is, you know, it is, it is sad, but I mean, it's not the end of the world though. They have to still get up and work. And uh, like Darren said, you know, you have lows in life. <laughs> you go ahead. You have lows and, and challenges in, in, in your in your profession too. And you know, this is a this is a test. Now the question is, how are they going to respond? Rocky you know? Balboa said it's not how many times you get hit, it's how many times you get up. Exactly. So let's yeah. see if the Steelers can get up. Right. And you have to learn to take the hits. Uh, see, see, Rocky's my dude. I, I, I'm a Rocky oh, yeah. fan. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I've actually, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I think you're right, Joe. I mean, bye week, uh, get rested up here, and then let's see what the second half of the season uh, gels like. I mean, I think the best thing we can hope for is they go into that last week of season against the Browns, you know, uh, making some big plays, being close in games and building into next year, not getting pasted 38-3. to three, uh, Right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> remember a time and you know in our lifetime well i could even say in my lifetime where Pittsburgh, cleveland wasn't even allowed to beat pittsburgh in pittsburgh in the old three river stadium days so <laughs> i think it was the, the david marinus book and he did the, the, the biography on chuck Knoll, and then the nfl network had him on when they did chuck Knoll biography and I, I found it funny chuck he, he mentions it in the book and they do it in that um uh in the nfl biography on on the nfl network where Chuck Knoll talks about how great they were in the seventies. And when things started, like you were talking about when I jumped on about the late seventies, when the early eighties started coming, he told his wife, you know how the, we had all those great years, prepare yourself. We're yeah. Have some down. <laughs> Didn't he? Yeah. He certainly did say that. I saw that interview too. You are yeah. so right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, and that's just, the, that's just the way it is. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, someone, and- someone said, would you compare this year to, Chuck Knoll's last year and Chuck Knoll's last year was, I believe the year where they started out 51, nothing lost to the Browns. Uh, No, you know what? His last year in 91, they finished seven and nine. Okay. So that was the second to uh, last year. No way. No, actually the 30, that was 89 when that happened. Okay. So that, okay. Yeah. Yeah, When they beat the Oilers in Houston and Danville's face, that was priceless. You that know, was that's what that's what we need. We need coaches want to fight each other because Chuck Noll definitely wanted to knock out Jerry Glenn. Hey, he Glenn. told him he was like, uh, <laughs> he I grabbed him there. at one point. He like yeah, he Jerry Glenn was like, "Good game." I'm like you, so guys yeah, said you're gonna get your tail kicked if you keep playing it. Like yeah, and yeah. he said I that mean was that. <laughs> yeah. Steelers and, Oilers was a nasty rivalry, yeah, man. They oh, would try to right. hurt each other. Yeah, it was hilarious. Yes, and, and and what is it? The House of Pain, Astrodome. House of Pain. Astrodome, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? What stands out in that in that final year for Chuck Noll? That's when he made the quarterback switch. Yeah. Was that the, the switch from Bubby? Bubby oh. to, to Neil O'Donnell. And oh. stayed with him. And that's when oh. they played that Houston game that y'all talking about when he uh pointed his finger at Glanville and he and, and uh, O'Donnell was struggling. He asked Bubby to come back in and Bubby said, I don't I don't mop up, up for anybody. Nobody, yeah. Anybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know where I was at when that happened? I can't believe I still remember it. 
fresh minute in college on pitch campus and we were oh, wow. I was watching it in, in, in my neighbor's room couldn't believe <laughs> it man <laughs> how do i remember that i have no idea <laughs> i i i remember exactly where i was when when they lost in the afc championship game to the chargers oh gosh yes oh, I, I was <laughs> i was i was in my i was in my dorm room and my girlfriend was sleeping so i had to be quiet oh, and i had what to, campus and, um, this is, this is, it was, that was, it was actually on pit campus. Yeah. What? How we be on pit campus at the same time? And then we didn't know each other. <laughs> I was on pit campus then too. <laughs> we, we, we probably passed by each other a bunch mm-hmm. of times. You obviously sick. didn't tell Ray that I was on another campus and shout out. He was made. on Penn State. Oh, uh, you was on Penn State's <laughs> campus, but you know what? I had a lot of good friends. So you, yeah. so, so they were around you and you was around them. So that's great, man. That's, that's really great. That's a beautiful I, campus up there. Too. Oh yeah. It's, it, it really is. They've done a great job. And I tell Joe, I'm, I'm one of the few Penn State fans who outright root for Pitt and I, I still say going to Penn State games even the early 80s with my dad mm-hmm. uh, um, I still remember and I still say this the best guard I've ever seen play football in my life was Bill Fralick I've never yeah, seen anybody yeah. like that in my life uh, and what a kind guy he was very uh, generous uh, uh, just probably one of my five favorite people I've ever met professional athlete wise in my life and I loved him um, so I'm I'm from Penn Hills I grew up in Penn Hills and Bill Freilich is like a god there. Mm-hmm. And I was I was too young when when he was playing, but still it's like it's like a thing of pride. And now that's funny that the thing of pride of Penn Tails is Aaron Donald. But right. but back then it was like, yeah, yeah, we got we 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 that's where I came from the same place that Bill Freilich came from. That was yeah, yeah he was he was maybe one of the greatest offensive linemen ever. I mean, when I was in high school, mm-hmm. Buddy Morris, who was the strength coach at Pitt then. Yeah. He came to us because we had a hospital locally that helped his daughter with, with something that was going on. Uh, so he, he ended up being our strength coach for his two years. But he would, he came out, he said, you know how Bill Fralick got to be Bill Fralick? And he had two cars parked in our, our track. And we wow. had to push cars. <laughs> Pushing cars. Push cars. Really? I mean, oh, that's yeah. A, that's, a, that's awesome. I love that. That's a great story, man. Yeah. I like that, man. That's Buddy Morris. Funny. And if you Google Buddy Morris now, he's like, 70 and he he looks like he could pretty much you know put a brick or a car through a wall he's, <laughs> he's huge that's so cool man that's so. great and All see right, that guys. impact that impact you'll never forget it i think about what bill fravent did when he uh put some money into the uh, facilities up there at Penn hills yeah looking at the stadium look at the look at the uh, training room and everything yeah well, it's yeah. funny, mm-hmm. full circle, we come around to this, right? When I jumped on, you guys were talking about the offensive line. And, and I think since they lost, um, I'm, I'm drawing a mind blank, the, the offensive line coach that lost. Oh, Mike Munchak. Mike Munchak, yeah. They just haven't been yes, sir. that cohesive unit. And and okay. that's where I think the talent's on the field. I think that's frustrates us as, as fans or reporters, whatever you want to call it. Um, is that you can see there's greatness there. There's the ability there. And it's just, it's just, it's all over the place. I mean, it's yeah. just, whoops, it's, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, it's, just, a, it's a young team. It's a young unit and there's no late leaders to step up mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, and they're trying the Cam, Hay- Cam Hayward is trying and, yeah. but you know, there's only so much you could do, but there's nobody on the offense. They're all just too young or, or something. And yeah, it's going to be real interesting to see how how that develops in the second half of the season if it develops hopefully with tj coming back it has yeah. to, it has to give them the spark that they've missed well, since week one yeah if there's sure. a guy that's going to ignite some uh, fire on you that's a guy i, I think yeah. that's i think that's huge i think that's huge I, th- I think i think when he comes back i think they're all going to have that spark and that hope that's sure we could we could start winning games so and and that's 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 huge sometimes mentally that's that's the most important thing so that's true we will see all right guys this was fun it was let's do it again ray it's been a pleasure i've always wanted likewise man love the house too man thanks brother i appreciate that thanks Joe. all right thanks guys i'll see you take care have a good evening